Hello, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be reviewing the best musky lure ever made, the River to Sea, Mr. Wiggly. This bait was designed by Larry Dahlberg and it was released in 2014, but it was discontinued shortly thereafter around 2017. First, the good things about this bait. The best thing about this bait is the action. It produces an extremely erratic, wounded bait fish action which, in my opinion, can entice the oldest, biggest, wisest muskies when no other lure could, as long as the water is relatively clear. The best way to create this action is demonstrated better than I could by the actual inventor of the bait in a video linked in the description. Now, I'm not a musky guy, per se. I rarely go out to strictly target them. Maybe at most five days a year do I do that. But if I'm ever on musky water, I always like to try to at least bring this lure tied onto a musky rod, if not anything else. And the amount of interest that I get from big muskies as a percentage of time spent throwing this is ridiculous by musky standards. To date, the best fish, best freshwater fish, the most impressive of any species I've ever caught has been on this lure, a 54 inch musky from the French River in Ontario that I'll show some footage of right now. Oh. Oh. Bobby Sam. Here he is. Oh, he's not hooked that well. Get the net. I think we can net him. I think we can net him. Get the net. He can throw the hook. He can throw the hook easy. Okay. So, some other positive things about this bait. It casts very well, weighs about four ounces, and it holds up better than you would expect because, even as a small rubber bait, because when the fish is hooked, the bait can slide up the line as he's thrashing around, which means that, number one, the bait isn't stuck in a toothy fish's mouth during the fight, getting all tore up, and number two, with the bait sliding up here, the fish cannot use the weight of the lure to as easily throw the hook like they can with a lot of baits that have treble hooks. Now there's several issues, several problems with this bait and the design of it that I think probably have a major, they have to be a major reason why it was ultimately discontinued. The first one, and I'll present these in the order in which I noticed them. The first issue is the leader breaking. So this lure, when you buy it, comes with a short multi-strand leader that you thread through the nose of the bait it comes out down here and then you attach it to a 4 aught treble with a split ring and out of the box it works fine but when it gets kinked usually after your first fish for example it will start to fall apart a lot of times right at the nose these individual strands as you can see will start to come unraveled and break from the friction I guess and it is rubbing through this this metal slot that it's fed through so basically you end up replacing them. I've never lost a fish because the leader broke because it's very obvious when this starts to happen. So you just need to be ready to replace your leaders if you're using this bait or something like it. I've been using 65 pound um, Sir Strand Micro Supreme AFW leader and then crimping it and that way it can easily, even the crimp can fit through here so that your, your um, hook can be snug like so as the crimp can fit in there but I honestly it's unnecessarily thin I could probably go heavier maybe 80 or 100 pounds and I'll probably do that the second issue is the weight system so when they designed this bait they wanted to have a adjustable weight system so they have these four metal beads inside of the belly of the bait 
And the way this is supposed to work is you're supposed to be able to pop these beads out through a small hole and put them back in as needed. The problem is that if a toothy fish bites this just right, he can slice open this belly and you can lose these four metal beads. I've never actually wanted to take them out. I think it sinks slow enough as it is. But these, obviously with toothy fish biting this bait, you start to slice it up and these can be released. Interestingly, for whatever reason, no big muskie has ever done that to me, but um, you tend to get these deep cuts and then I, uh, from the smaller pike or muskie that might be biting it, and then you basically super glue them. But I, I did have one instance where a brand new bait was completely sliced open from the first fish that bit it, which was a 27 inch muskie, and, and I got the fish in and then there were no, no beads left. So that can happen. It doesn't seem to happen that often though. The third issue is that some of the colors don't work as well. This is my favorite color, Red Horse. It works great, but any of the colors with glitter um, or the perch color, either because of the glitter that's in there or the, the ink that they use in like the perch colored lure, it makes the bait stiffer and it doesn't have as good of action. You know, you have to burn it a lot faster to get the bait to swim, which uh, is a problem and I basically don't use those. The simple colors like Red Horse that I showed you or like this, they work great, you know, extremely low, um, you know, elast elastic modulus or whatever, if you want to get fancy, but um, not, the, not the colors with glitter in them. Now the fourth issue, and probably the most horrifying issue, is the tendency for this to happen. You're working it really erratically and the hook catches over the nose of the bait. This is a very scary problem because if it's like this and a fish bites, you're not going to catch them. So I've actually had to pull this lure away from a muskie at both side because I noticed that that was the case. And so I wanted to get it in, fix it, and put it back in front of them. But, you know, obviously if a fish bites and it's like this, you're not going to catch them. One way to avoid that problem is to hook the treble in the belly of the bait. Now, I don't like that option, so like so. I don't like that option because I think I've noticed it seems to hinder the actual action a little bit because it's no longer completely... This, this bait is awesome because it's flexible all the way up to the head. So this thing has a crazy swimming action when you, when you, when you do short bursts with the reel. But uh, if you hook it in there, it doesn't have as good of action. And the other thing that I worry about is, you know, by this coming in and then getting dislodged by a fish and put, put back in, you know, I risk, I feel that I risk losing these beads, you know, as you start to tear through the rubber there. I also think the hookup ratio is probably better with this hook freely swinging down, as you can see. So one trick that I think tends to work because I didn't notice this issue at first, which is don't work the bait with the rod. Work it only with the reel. So if you have a fast action reel like a Tranx, the way you work the, this bait and, and, and minimize the risk of that hook thing happening is with short burst of the reel, very fast burst, either you know a quarter turn if you wanted to do the equivalent of, of a rod twitch, or you know several several fast turns to get the bait to swim and then stop swim and then stop but keep the rod still while you're working this bait do everything with a high powered uh, reel and that way you don't create a bunch of slack in a line which is how that can uh, happen the most easily so that's it basically this bait is impossible to find I did see that uh, now that it's been discontinued. Back in 2017, Larry Dahlberg, the, the inventor of the bait, had indicated on a forum that they were going to fix the issues and, and re-release the lure the following year. But that was in 2017, and it hasn't happened. So if you can get your hands on one of these, you know, I have, because it's amazing, I have a bunch of them. 
but if you can get your hands on these, you're very lucky, and hopefully they will, River to Sea, uh, release an updated new and improved version that fixes these issues in the future. Thanks for watching.